We're thinking about trying to offer something that people can't get otherwise. There is appetite for more sector type investments, whether it's energy or financial. We need to make sure that we're communicating effectively, that we provide some transparency in what historically has been quite an opaque industry. My name is Greg Brousseau and I'm co-founder of Central Park Group and with Mitchell I am co-CEO and co-chief investment officer of the firm. Greg and I are kind of on our third tour of duty together. We worked at a mid-sized financial services firm. We worked at one of the large global financial services company and we wanted to go out on our own because we wanted to be fully independent and be able to make whatever decisions we thought were the right decisions for our customers. So I, I think one thing we noticed going back probably 20 years or so ago, institutions had access to both managers and strategies that the individuals didn't have access to. That was the aha moment for us when we started to approach some of these managers and say, you know, will you run capital for the individual investor? There are these incredibly interesting and exciting investment opportunities that have been available to institutional investors, but never to individual investors. And Central Park Group was founded to make these available for individuals. What I love about the Central Park Group is we've taken this from basically a couple of computers and cell phones where we had an idea and created something that today has you know, 20 funds. We've developed quite a great reputation in our space. Much like the internet and many new technologies that are providing access to information that people never had before, what I feel that Central Park Group is offering in the world is really access to an asset class that has been restricted to institutions. Part of what we did was bending some existing investment company structures that were out there so that we could, for example, offer a fund that might have ordinarily had a multi-million dollar investment minimum down to investors where they might only have to commit $100,000. So we, had, we started on changing some of the, the structures and the boxes that were being used in the industry. We take all these individuals and they put smaller amounts of money in, but when we put them all together and aggregate them, we become an institution. Now, asset management is all about track records, and we've put a lot of capital out over the years. I think we've invested in excess of $12 billion across 150 different real estate, private equity firms, hedge fund firms, and I think clients have benefited from that. And I think we hit a point where we really wanted to do this unencumbered and really express what we think was the best direction for clients. One of our key advantages, or what we do well, revolves around education. Every investment has risks. It's my job to make that advisor um, aware of the risks and the rewards in the, in the proper way so they can position it, and, and that's important. Due diligence is, it involves identifying an investment area that's attractive, going out and creating a short list of people who, who are skilled in that area. Sometimes we'll do something where we'll put together a pool with a few different managers, but if you're only going to pick one, which one do you think has the, the highest probability of being very successful and then making a decision ultimately that you want to invest with manager A versus manager B. It ain't rocket science. It's something that my mother would understand. It's really something that I think the whole industry has maybe over, over complicated. We did not fully understand a decade or so ago how disruptive this approach to asset management was going to be. And I think all we're doing is fitting into a much bigger picture across many, many industries whether it be education, healthcare, the music industry, the movie industry. It's basically bringing a small set of services or benefits that have been sort of ensconced in this lockbox, in this case, institutional asset management, out to a much broader audience. You know, Wall Street's not very big on thank yous and stuff like that, but over the years, an awful lot of financial advisors have, you know, come up to us and so say thank you. That's really gratifying. It doesn't happen most days of the week, but when it does, it makes you feel good about what we're doing.